Hi, for this video, what we are going to do is we are going to perform a one proportion Z test using the TI-84 graphing calculator to help us out. Um, what the situation we have is a polling agency reports that over 60%, since we have a percentage, um, anytime you have a percent or a proportion that tells you to use the one proportion Z test, um, I think that the bank bailouts were bad for the US. In a random sample, this is our sample size, of 350 U.S. adults, 214 said the bailouts were bad, and alpha equals 0 0.01, is there enough evidence to support the claim? So like I said, we are going to run a one proportion Z test. In order to run this test, there are a couple of conditions that must be met. Um, the textbook that I currently teach from requires you to have a random sample and all textbooks that I have taught from require n times p to be greater than or equal to 5. And n times q has to be greater than or equal to 5. This allows the normal model to kick in um, so that you can calculate a binomial distribution because this is technically a binomial distribution, which is discrete. But we can use a normal model to help us approximate it. As long as our sample size is greater, or the sample size times the proportion is greater than or equal to 5. So for this one, if I take and I multiply this out, this gives me 210, which is definitely greater than or equal to 5. And Q, remember Q is found by doing 1 minus P, so in this case it would be 0.4, which equals 140, and this is definitely also greater than or equal to 5. So these two conditions are both met. Um, some of the other textbooks that I have taught from talk about the independence feature and um, the textbook that I'm currently using, this is not a condition that is listed in there, but other textbooks, a lot of the other textbooks list this one is that the, the sample size um, has to be less than 10% of the population. And 350 is definitely less than 10% of all U.S. adults. So this condition is met, like I said, um, my current textbook, you don't have to list that one, but other textbooks I have taught from do. After we have tested the conditions and determined what test we are using, we want to state the null and the alternative. Remember, the null always contains equality. The alternative does not. So for this, it says the claim is that over 60%, over does not include. So our alternative, P is greater than 0 0.60, this would be our claim. The null hypothesis would be the opposite of that, so P less than or equal to 0.6. And so what we want to do is we want to see if we have enough evidence to support this claim. So in order to calculate this, what we need to know is we need to know P hat. And for P hat, I'm just going to leave it as a fraction just because um, 214 over 350, when I divide this out, it does not give me a nice, precise decimal. It actually gives me um, approximately 0.6114. Um, and because you have to round it, it can cause your calculations to not be as accurate. So I tend to just leave things as fractions if it doesn't reduce nicely to a nice, concise decimal like 0.5 or 0.6. Um, the other things that we need to know are the sample size, which we've already talked about as 350. And then we have to know P and Q, and P, remember, is 0.6, Q is 0.4. And remember, we found this one by doing the 1 minus P. So now that we have all of the information, I'm going to go ahead and draw out my model. I'm not going to shade it yet until after I have ran the test to see what exactly I need to shade. Um, I am using a p-value as my decision rule. The p-value is the probability of getting this proportion out of this population if this is true. Um, so the test standardized test to statistic that we are going to calculate is z equals p-hat minus p divided by the square root of p times q divided by n. So we would just plug in all of these values, p-hat is 214 over 350. P is 0.6. And then in the denominator, we would just plug in the 0.6 and the 0.4 divided by 350. 
If it is not an expectation for you to show the work and all you need is a test statistic, you can bypass this step and go directly to your calculator because your calculator will give you this value. So to go there, we would go to stat and tests. Um, remember, I told you this one is the one proportion Z test, so we would choose option five. And it asks us for P naught, X, and N. So P naught is our null hypothesis, was the 0.6. X is our number of successes. If it gives it to you as a percentage, you would just take your percent times your um, sample size. And you have to round it to the nearest whole number because this is estimating a binomial distribution, which is a discrete distribution and decimals are not allowed. And then your test, you pick the tail that matches your alternative hypothesis. So greater than P naught is our alternative. And I'm going to go ahead and draw this just so I can see what it looks like. Again, if you have the color calculator, um, you can change colors. If you don't, you don't get that option. And then you would just hit draw. And when you draw this, it does take a little bit of time to calculate and shade. So if you look at this, wow, we shaded a lot. That right there tells me that automatically, just looking at this, that this is very, very likely to get a sample like this if the true proportion was um, 60%. So um, that shows me where to shade on here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch colors. So I'm going to shade this in. And remember that when I shade this using, when I use a p-value, this right here represents the p-value. Um, if you're using a rejection region, it represents alpha. And our z, if we look down at the bottom of our shading, the z right here is our standardized test statistic, so the 0.4364 is our standardized test statistic. And the probability of getting this, which is our p-value, the p-value is the probability that our p-hat um, is greater than 214 over 350 based on this sampling distribution of the sample proportion. Um, so again, we're just going to report that value, but I just want you to know what that value means, the 0.33. That means that 33% of the time we could get this sample from this population, which is very likely to happen. Um, I forgot to write down alpha, so let's go back up to our problem. Alpha is 0 0.01. So we would compare our P value to our alpha level. If P is less than alpha, we reject. If it's not, we fail to reject. So since the p-value of 0.313 is much greater than alpha 0 0.01, we fail to reject, and that's our decision that we would make, so we fail to reject h sub 0. Okay, um, so we could say at 1%, We definitely do not, I'm just going to put we do not, but it's definitely do not have enough evidence to support the claim that more than 60% of the population of U.S. adults think the bank bailouts are bad. When you talk about con context, make sure that you are including in um, the nature of the original problem. So basically, you have to just restate the claim that was originally put in the problem. So we were looking for, is there enough evidence to support the claim? We do not have enough evidence to support that claim. So that is answering that question. As always, thanks for watching.